we all just start by beginning to look at the Lord? Oh, you're beautiful, Jesus. You're wonderful. We purpose in our hearts to look at you this morning. For who can compare to you? Oh, Jesus, we behold you, this man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We behold the cross this morning, Jesus. Give us the grace to love you. Give us the grace to love you, precious Jesus. Psalm 36 says, Your loving kindness, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. And the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They drink their fill in the abundance of your house, and you give them drink of the river of your delights, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. So Jesus, we come hungry this morning. We come thirsty for a drink of this everlasting life, Jesus, of these waters that won't run dry, Jesus, for you are the well that won't run dry, Father. We love you, Jesus. And we say, we're here for you. We are here for you and you alone. Could you tell him that this morning? That we are here for you and you alone, Jesus. There is no other reason, Jesus. And we love you. There is none that compares to you. Be with us this morning. In Jesus' name.
to him I owe Sin I left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow And Jesus paid it all And all to him I owe Sin I left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. 
Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is this man To the one who endured All the shame of the cross To the Lamb who was slain As atonement for us To the Son who overcame All the power of death We pray Yeah For the stripes For the wounds For the beating you bore For the tears For the blood That was willingly poured For the merciful Wonderful majesty Of your love To the one Who endured All the shame of the cross To the Lamb Who was slain As a tome for us To the Son Who overcame All the power
Forget about every person next to you. Jesus, you are worthy. Jesus, you are holy. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. What kind of king? Jesus, you made a covenant with your own blood, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us. Thank you that you tore the veil, Jesus. Thank you that you are in this room right now. Yes, just recognize him in the room. Thank you, Lord. You are in the room, Jesus. You are in the room to set free. You are in the room to save, Jesus. You're in the room to heal, Jesus. We thank you, God. We pray, Lord, that many, Lord, that they would be touched, God. We don't wanna leave the same, Jesus. Conform us into your image, Jesus. Conform us into your image, Jesus. Cut away anything, God, that would hinder love, Jesus. We wanna be set apart for you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you're making your bride ready, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, Jesus, in this moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Speak to hearts even now, Jesus. In your precious name, amen. Can we just give a praise to the Lord? Can you just honor Him? just be sensitive to the Lord and just go back to your chairs, but the Lord is in this room truly. I just kept feeling that there is no one like Him, truly no one like Him. Yeah. I just wanna invite you now, if you could just give your attention to the Lord. He truly satisfies, He truly satisfies. And I feel like the Lord is truly gonna meet the hungry today. I just felt that the Lord's speaking to my heart, the hungry ones, I'm here for the hungry ones. And I just wanna read this scripture. And if we could just honor the scriptures, I just believe that the Lord is going to pierce your hearts even as the word is being read that he's gonna draw you. I feel like even now you might be feeling it in your heart, the Lord drawing you away. I just feel like the Lord, his heart just to call for first love. I just feel that strongly, that he's looking for friends today. He's looking for friends. He's looking for laid down lovers. And when I was praying, I was asking the Lord, okay, God, what are you speaking? And he, he took me to John six, and I'm gonna start in verse 27. And it says, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. 
And I'm just gonna skip down to verse 35. And it said, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives to me, I mean, gives me, will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast him out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus truly satisfies, that he truly satisfies that if you're hungry today, that he wants to meet you today. If you are thirsty today, he's here to give you a drink. And, and as I was praying, I really felt the Lord speaking that there's people in this room and you love coming to this church, that you feel the presence of the Lord strongly in worship. But I feel like you almost are nervous to go back home because you don't have that communion. You don't have fellowship with him like the same way. And sometimes it can make you a little bit anxious to go back to your lifestyle. And I feel like the Lord calling you into this holy relationship with Him to truly set your, yourself apart. I love how it talks about don't sow in things that perish, sow, sow into things that are eternal. And I feel like there's been, there was a season of my life where I was, I was giving my time and my attention to lesser lovers. And some of them weren't necessarily sin, but I would use it, I would, I would use those things in, in replacement for the Lord. And I remember I became weary, I became, there was so much that just started fear and, and all of this stuff started sneaking into my life. And I remember getting to this place and I just started praying. I was like, Lord, what is going on? Why do I feel this? Why do I feel like I don't feel you? I don't see you. I feel like you've left me. Where are you, Jesus? And I just heard the Lord spoke to me. He says, I miss you. I miss you. And I, I just realized in that moment that I was giving my attention to all of these things, to my family, to my friends, to, to other things, maybe movies, all of this stuff. And I was running from the Lord. I was, I was caught up in busyness, busyness of life, work. And I felt the Lord saying, I miss you. Will you come to me? Will you come to me just like the way you come to church, how you come hungry every single Sunday for the Lord to meet you? Will you go into that closet? Do you expect him to move? And so I just want you to close your eyes right now. And I just want you to ask yourself this question. Are you being satisfied fully in the Lord? Is he enough for you? When you go into the room, when you shut the door, is he enough for you? Or do you feel busy? Do you feel like you, you can't sit still? I don't believe this is to shame anyone, truly. Please hear my heart. I feel the Lord saying there's more. There's so much more. You don't have to live in that reality. I'm telling you, Jesus is so close. He wants to be your best friend. So I, I just wanna invite you, if that's you, can you just raise your hands? Maybe even sin has crept into your life. Other things have caught your attention. You've been finding your, your value and being satisfied in other things. I feel the Lord saying, leave those things. I'm enough, I will fill you, I will fill that void. If that's you, can you just raise your hands? Yes, yes. Okay, can we all stand? We're gonna stand together. And I just want, before you come to the altar, I just want you to determine that you are gonna come here for Him. He, he's gonna meet you. I really feel like people are gonna be filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit today. I feel like He's gonna fill you today. So if you raised your hands or you wish you did, I wanna invite you to come to the altar. I wanna invite you to come find Jesus. He truly satisfies. If there's things that busyness has crept in, sin has crept in, these lesser lovers, I want you to come down to the altar. Yes, yeah, can we just honor them? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I feel like he's gonna break off all shame today. If there's been any shame here today, I feel like the Lord wants you to encounter his deep love for you. In 1 John 4, it says that God is love. He is love. We can love him because he's first loved us. He's not looking for works today. Please don't hear that today. I just feel like the Lord asking you to surrender everything to Him. 
so He can fill all places, all voids. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we're just, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If we could just stretch our hands, if you can just pray for them. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you tore the veil, God. You tore in the veil, Jesus. Thank you that you are here, Lord, in our midst right now, God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for every life choosing you, choosing you, leaving all, Lord. Strip it all away today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you will draw them into deeper love with you today, God. Thank you, Lord, that if there's any shame, if there's any fear, God, that it will be lifted today, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you guys can just repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my attention. I give you lesser lovers. I repent for sin. I repent for turning my eyes away from you. Thank you that you truly satisfy. I turn to you today. Keep me, Lord, in your love. Keep me in your grace. Thank you that you came to this earth, Lord, that you lived a sinless life, that you took my punishment, you took my place on the cross. Thank you that you ascended and that you rose again on the third day, that you conquered sin, sickness, and death, and that you ascended to the right hand of the Father and that you are coming again. Thank you that you promised the Holy Spirit to empower me to live a holy life that you've given me the mind of Christ, that you have called me righteous and holy because of your blood. Wash me today, fill me today. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, I feel this strongly that, that this, it ends today. I feel like you're gonna be excited, even going home today, that you're gonna be excited because I feel that the friendship, like I was thinking of Pastor Michael's message, it just kept ringing in my heart how the scriptures talk about he's looking for friends, he's looking for laid down lovers. And I just wanna invite you to live a holy life. How to live free is by being in the scriptures every single day. The scriptures are truly life. That's what it says, that it is life. It, it truly is bread and water. Our body truly needs it. We cannot, if you've ever gone on a fast, you know, like your, your body needs food and that's the same. So I wanna encourage you every single day, go to the scriptures, be dependent on Him. Second is prayer. This is communion. This is fellowship with Him. We cannot live on our own strength. We cannot keep our way pure. We are all are fallen humans. That's why we need grace. We need Jesus. So I wanna invite you guys every single day, come to the Lord like a child, literally praying, God, be with me today. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for joy. Whatever it is, I, I believe He's gonna meet you. And third, He's called us um, into baptism. That is announcing to the world it's choosing Jesus. It's a marriage ceremony. It's so beautiful. If you've ever been here when we did it, to have done it, we've truly seen so many people get set free in the waters, declaring one lover, one person I choose is that Jesus. And fourth is to walk life with Christians. That's called church. And we are not called to live this life alone. Truly, you need brothers and sisters. It says iron sharpens iron. So I wanna invite you guys into accountability, even get plugged into a church, get plugged into accountability, people inviting you to follow the Lord every day and last is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Like I said in the scriptures, Jesus said that it's actually better for me to leave 
than to be here because God wanted to send His Holy Spirit to live inside of each one. So we're gonna pray right now if some of the team, if we could just lay our hands and if you guys, um, if you can stretch your hands too, we're just gonna believe that right now that the Holy Spirit, my whole life changed when the Holy Spirit met me. My whole entire life changed. So Jesus, we just thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us, Lord, not to walk this life alone, Jesus, but that you have truly, you have, um, determined in your heart to walk with us, Lord, to empower us through the Holy Spirit. So right now we just pray over every person here, God. I pray that you would rest upon them, Jesus. I pray that you would fill them right now, God. From their head to their toes, I pray that they would tangibly feel you on their body, God. That you would just confirm, Lord, that you were there with them, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for even just launching dip, deep, um, deeper intimacy, deeper friendship, God. God, even as they go home today, God, I pray that they would go home with an awareness of you, Jesus, like never before, God. Thank you, Lord. We plead your blood over them, God. Thank you. Set their, their lives apart, God, for your glory. In your precious name we pray, amen. Amen. If we could just honor every person. So beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I believe you guys are never gonna be the same. You guys are welcome back to your chairs. If we could just welcome them as they go back to their chairs. So beautiful. And if we could just welcome Kaylee. That was beautiful. I have a few announcements this morning, some exciting announcements. Um, Jesus 23 is less than a month away. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. I was thinking about it on the drive over and I was just remembering like where I was in every room those days and Jesus 19 when we were in that building and how the Lord touched me and I really believe he's gonna do it again. So bring your family and your friends and bring the lost because the Lord's gonna mark our lives again and he's so faithful. So that is December 14th and through the 16th, I believe. Um, and then also the Vision Cup. Anyone in the room like golf? <laughs> if you do, uh, uh, we are going to have our first inaugural uh, golf tournament at uh, TPC Sawgrass in Ponte Vedra, Florida. That's February 1st through the 2nd. Um, so golf will be obviously the main event and then we'll have beautiful banquets in the evening to worship together, to fellowship together. There's other activities. Even if you're not a golfer, there's activities. If you wanna find out about those and the details and the schedule, you can visit our website um, under Vision Cup. So those are the two announcements I have. And now we get to step into a time of worship, which is offering, amen. Um, this morning, I, I really feel like the Lord woke me up with this lyric in my head, and um, it was, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And it just hit so good, like, wow, all the fear and the worry that I had from the week it just kind of melted away when I heard the Holy Spirit say that to me. And of course, I listened to the song in the car and like really started thinking about what is my blessed assurance? What is my hope? And um, the Lord took me to Titus 2, uh, 12, or actually 2, 11. So I'm gonna read that. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, amen, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. That is us. He is our blessed hope. So if you came in accidentally with fear of finances and your, you know, life is... We're not gonna deny that money does drive the world, but we are not driven by that. We have a hope in Jesus. We have a hope, our hope is not in our finances, it's in the Lord. And so when you come today, come with a heart posture that is so full of trust in the one you're giving to. And when you put that offering in the bucket, 
I don't want us to think about what it costs us. I want us to be so focused on what it costs him that we just come with so much gratitude and joy with our giving. And I just also too, just wanna pray over you guys um, before you give and that we would just turn our affection on him again and that every other worry and fear uh, would fall away and that we don't trust in the world system. We have a blessed assurance. We have an eternal hope and it's Jesus. He's coming back and we are so full of expectancy as we give, okay? Well, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for every person in the room and I thank you for the joy of your return that we look to you and the hope of our salvation is you, Jesus. You are our our hope. We put all of our hope in you as we give. We trust you, Lord, and I ask you to bless every hand that's in the room, Lord. Prosper them and keep them, Lord. I plead your blood over them as they give. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. There's a few ways you can give if you're in the room and you need an envelope. You can raise your hand and an usher will bring you one. If you're online or in the room and you wanna give by QR code or text, there's a number on your screen.
morning. How are you guys? Awesome, awesome. Oh, you do not have to do that. I love you too. Sit down, sit down. I love you guys. Sit down. Um, Michael this morning is once a year, he goes to Upper Room. So he's ministering there tonight. And I, every time he's there and we're here, God does something so special in the spirit. And um, maybe if I feel permission from the Holy Spirit, I will share a dream that I had last night with um, Michael Miller and Lowe. It was really holy. But Michael will be there. But don't worry, tonight is going to be amazing. One of our favorites is coming. And <laughs> there will be a healing service. I told my son on the way, he said, who's preaching tonight? I said, you know, I said, and um, he goes, oh man, I would have rather gone tonight. And I was like, okay, I'm glad that you'd rather be there tonight to, than hear me, but it's all good. Tonight's going to be wonderful though. I'm believing that the sick will be healed, not just physically, but emotionally, spiritually in every area. So come hungry, bring the lost, bring people that need a touch from God. It's going to be an amazing night tonight. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now. Lord, move, move and have your way, God. We worship you, Jesus. We give you all of our burdens, God. We give you the heaviness, Lord. We give you the cares, Lord. We cast them upon you, God, because your word says you care for us. You don't only want our issues, Lord. It's your desire to take them because you love us so much, Lord. So Lord, we thank you, we welcome you, God, today into this house, to everyone watching online, Jesus. Kill all distraction, Lord, all distraction, God, all the little foxes, God. We worship you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that I'll just preach your word in clarity and truth, God. Give me the words to say. You take over. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Well, I've been teaching on the fear of the Lord, as you know, and I think I'm going to finish it today. So it was supposed to be a one message turned into a three-part message, but um, I feel like God is really, really calling us to walk in the fear of the Lord. I feel, I feel like this is just me, but I feel like the last thing that we have to walk into as a body is first love for Jesus and the fear of God. It's needed. It is a message that is very costly right now. It's not an easy message to preach because persecution comes with it. But when I feel the devil trying to silence me, I just speak even louder. So you have to, we have to stand clear on the Bible right now. It's time to hold on to his scriptures. Leaders, it's time to teach the word and give your people the scriptures. It's safety, it's not control, it's a beautiful thing and it's needed in this hour. And I feel like the enemy is trying to silence the voice of the clear scripture and we can't let that happen. The hour is too great. I cannot go to heaven one day and know that I was not faithful to the Lord. I have to be faithful. I live for him, not people. I love his people, but I live for him. And I cannot water down the gospel. I cannot water down his word. We can't. The road is getting more narrow, as Stephanie said when she was here not too long ago. And you can feel that. You feel it. And it's time, guys, leaders or not, Christians, it's time to go after Jesus with everything we have right now. And give the truth. It's like a hammer. The word breaks the chains. That's what does it, so be bold, speak up, love Jesus with all of your heart, love his children with all of your heart, treat others as you'd like to be treated in yourself, and preach the gospel in clarity, amen? Amen. So go to Psalm 103. Just kind of going to go over a little recap of last week. Psalm 103, 16 through 17. It says, the wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here, but the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him. 
His salvation extends to the children's children. I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago when I talked about this last. Not only does walking in fear of God protect you and your life, it actually will impact the generations to come. Our children, number one, should learn from the example of Jesus, but they're also learning from the example that you parents set for them. You grandparents, the example. So I pray that my kids always walk in the fear of God. But if I don't, if Michael doesn't, my kids probably will not. Probably will not. The the odds will be against them. So if you have a household that fears God, and fear now is like a four-letter word, which it is. I know that. I'm I'm right. Wait, F-E-A-R. Yep, four letters. Um, But it's seen as taboo because it offends the people that are slacking and not burning in love with Jesus. So I want my kids to fear God. Why? Because I want protection for them. I want longevity for them. I want God's grace and mercy on their life. And we're gonna go through some of these scriptures today, but there's so many scriptures. Just search on the fear of God and it will blow your mind. I encourage all of you guys to do that. Don't just listen to me. Start to really meditate on these words right now. I really feel it's what God is saying in this hour. I really do. I could be wrong, but I feel it so strong right now. I've said God is really inviting his bride back to fellowship. But to walk with him, we have to obey him. Remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. We have to obey him. And I'm so happy to obey a God that is over the cosmos with all my heart. I don't want to lead my own way. I want to be led by him. There is danger in isolation. There is danger when we isolate ourselves. That's where all these weird new ideas and theologies come in with isolation. Like Michael has said before, I trust what the Bible has said for thousands of years. I trust the old way. I'm not trying to come up with some new crazy way. There is protection in what's already been done. There's safety in that. So again, if we are a family that fears God, our children, it will get on our children. It, the word just, we just read it. His salvation extends to the children's children. That means generations. I know that I'm standing right here today in this very building. And I know we talk about this building a lot, but it just blows my mind that we get to be here. All, I mean, I never imagined, I, I knew it in my gut, but I never thought God was actually gonna fulfill such a desire in my heart that we would get to even be here. And right now, building our own building that's, that's breaking ground at the beginning of 2024. Thank you, Lord. We broke ground. I'm sorry, we're going vertical in the beginning of 2024. You guys are like, wait, didn't we just watch a groundbreaking day? The ground's been broken, but they're gonna start building and I just cannot wait for that day. But I'm very aware that it's the fear that my family walked in that got me here to this point. I am not that foolish to think that it's all about me and this just happened by chance. My parents walked in the fear of the Lord. Their parents walked in the fear of the Lord. I don't know the generations before that, but I can tell you my grandparents walked in the fear of God. They weren't perfect, but they walked in the fear of God. My dad has walked in the fear of God. I I mean, made many mistakes, but feared God. I think that's why he's still standing to this day, still going. Well, it got on me. And I believe God is gonna use my children and my children's children. This is the promise of the kingdom. So parents, if you walk in the fear of the Lord, it's impossible not to get on your family. It will be a shield and protection And it's a beautiful thing. So as we said last week, living this way, it not only impacts you, but the future generation. There has to be a shift. I'll say that again. There has to be a shift right now. We are at a crossroad, I feel, in the body of Christ. There is a great falling away. There is a great separation. I wanna be on the right side of it. It'd be pride for me to think that it's, that I'm just secure. I know that I have to walk this out daily with fellowship and intimacy with Jesus so that I am not left behind. I remember when I was a teen, teenager in college, somewhere in that age range, and I remember having a dream that terrified me. I should probably share it next time I share the gospel message, maybe. The dream was that my name, I was before the throne and 
the Lamb's Book of Life, the, the, the names are being read and my name was not on the list. And I remember crying and begging for another chance to make it right. It was such a sobering dream and I was maybe 18. I really needed that dream at that age, by the way. Um, but I remember being like, no, no, it has to be there. I, I grew up in a, fa- in a family with, uh, my parents are ministers, like begging God, please have mercy, but it was, it was too late. It shook me to the core. I've never forgotten it. It's been so many years ago, but it shook me because I know that the hour is now. The hour is now. And I want to please Jesus with all of my heart. I want to live as an example before him. I want to please him. That's just my desire. I, I know I'm not perfect. I know he corrects me every day. Every day he corrects me. And I love it. And I love it. I, I examine my heart every morning when I pray, Lord, show me the things. Man, I, I mean, sometimes there are little things that you feel like, this is silly. But if the Lord's bringing them to your attention, it's for a reason. So you have to give it to Jesus. But there is a great shifting right now in the body of Christ and a great sifting as well. And I wanna be the one that fears him and goes after him, no matter the cost, no matter the cost. And there is a cost in following Jesus. There's such a cost. Maybe I will share the dream I had. So I dreamt last night that I was preaching on this message and I knew Michael was out of town, which he is, so maybe that's why but I was walking into a stadium and I was in the um, underground area of a stadium and I remember knowing I had to share this message on the fear of God and feeling very exposed and vulnerable and alone, thinking there's not many people that will share this right now and I knew I had to and I knew it was gonna be costly and I felt just in my heart as I was walking like, Lord, please, I don't want to be the only one, not that we are, of course, we don't want Elijah complexes, it's just us, Lord, no, no, but I was feeling very alone and lonely in this dream. And then in walks Ben Fitzgerald, and in walks Michael Miller, and in walks Low Miller, and they came so um, stately in a way, like they had a job to do. And I knew they were there to support me and Michael as friends and to stand with us, but I knew they were also called to carry this message in the last days. And when I saw Lo Miller, and I shared this with her this morning, um, my eyes locked with her, and I started to cry. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending these friends that stand for purity and righteousness to stand alongside us. Thank you. And I just kept looking at her. We kept walking, and, and Ben Fitz and Michael Miller were just didn't even look at me, but I know they were with me in the spirit. But Lo and me just kept locking eyes, and she just gave me that look like, friend, you're not alone. I'm right here. We're with you. Go do what it is you need to do. And I felt, and I, I told Ben and Lo this this morning, I felt like... God is gonna emerge more people to stand with clarity right now. He is, and, and I do think my friends like Ben and the Millers are part of this. They're leading wonderful movements that are shaking the world, and, but it was a lonely road, if this makes sense. It wasn't one that everybody wanted to walk on, but it was so holy, and when something is costly, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So thank you, Lord, for all it is you want to do. I mean, this is why I love this church so much. You guys are, you're going after Jesus, and your hunger and love for Jesus provokes me to love him more. It really does. So let's get back into the scripture. I lost where I was. But go to Psalm 112. Again, like I was saying, this message will shift a generation, and I'm going to actually read that right now to you from the word. Psalms 112. I'm just reading parts of it for sake, the sake of time, but I'm skipping around a little bit, but it's all right there. It says, praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. Listen to this. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy and their good deeds will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the godly Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. They are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. Amen. 
They share freely and give generously to those in need. That part's amazing too. You gotta say amen to that as well. They're givers. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. The wicked will see this and be infuriated. Don't think for a moment your zealous love over Jesus will not offend the, the religious spirit. It will. They will grind their teeth in anger and they will slink away their hopes thwarted. This all happens when we fear God. We just read it. And there are so many more passages, like I said, to back this up. But it's what we do when we fear him. Go to Proverbs 1, 28 through 31. This is what God says when we don't fear him. Proverbs 1, 28 through 31. It says, when they cry for help, I will not answer. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. For they hated knowledge and chose not to what? Fear the Lord. They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Therefore, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way, choking on their own schemes. It's in the Bible. Don't get mad at me. It's what the word of God says. There's something dangerous when we feed ourselves with our own ambition. Eventually, we choke on it. it, 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 it it's bitter to the taste. It's, it's dangerous. There is protection in trusting in God and fearing him. It says they rejected my advice. That's why we all do wrong. Let me be very clear, we sin every day. The Bible says we all fall short. Now there's a difference with continuing to live in habitual sin, I understand that, but we every single day, we have to examine our hearts before the Lord and let him cleanse us, let him correct us. The word just says, I corrected you, but you did not listen. That means you say, no, Lord, I don't care that you're telling me not to do that anymore. I don't care that you're telling me not to say that anymore. I don't care that you're telling me not to slander and gossip anymore. I don't care that you're telling me not to watch that program anymore. I don't care that you're telling me not to look at that anymore, the things that you know you shouldn't be looking at. It's saying, I'm not listening. I reject your advice. I am going my own way. There's so much danger in that. A heart that fears God says, thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing this to my attention. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, that you're so merciful to me that you just showed me a weakness that I have been numb to for years and years and years. Eventually, we become numb. When we keep sinning, we start telling ourselves it's not sinful. We've become numb. It's like a vaccine, you know? It just gives you a little bit to help everything else. You become immune to it. But the Holy Spirit does the best surgery and he shows you the littlest things in your life that have to go. And a heart that fears God says, thank you, Jesus, I will not talk like that anymore. I will not say those things anymore. I will not watch those things anymore. I just won't do it. Because living with you means more to me than all the counterfeit things in this world. Like I said before, they're only temporary things that satisfy they wear off and typically you feel worse afterwards. It like numbs you for a moment and then it's like, oh, now I feel more, more distant. We were never meant to be distant from God. We as his children, we were meant to fellowship with him. It is unnatural for the believer to be distant from Jesus. It is unnatural for us not to live a life of thanksgiving and prayer. It's unnatural. It feels unnatural. When Theo went into preschool, he was my firstborn. I was separated from him for the first time. It was fun. No, it wasn't fun. It was torture. 
It was traumatic. I sat in the parking lot and bawled my eyes out for literally an hour. I know, don't judge. Michael was totally like looking at me like, what is wrong with you? I wouldn't leave the parking lot. Like he just, I couldn't do it. Then I bawled like, like really cry, <gasps> like that kind of cry, you know, <laughs> like it's not everywhere. And I, I couldn't do it. And I kept calling the principal. I'm like, is, is he okay? She's like, yes, he's fine. We just checked on him. I told you, he's just playing with a friend, drinking juice. But like, it was so unnatural. I had been with him for three years, never left his side, but for like maybe I think one trip and it was for like a couple days. And even that, it was weird. But it was so unnatural to me that like everything in me felt like my whole life is out of order today. <laughs> I couldn't even think at the grocery store. I was just, all I could think about was Theo. That's the only thing on my mind. It doesn't matter what else was going on. I can't wait to be back with my son. Well, how much more is it like that with the Lord? How much more? Like we are one. We are, we are made to be together. It is not natural for us to be separated from him. We need him. And when we don't have him, our whole life is out of whack. Nothing makes sense. Nothing goes right. With him, there is clarity and there is vision and there is perfection in following Jesus. And this all comes from walking in fear of the Lord and fellowship and intimacy with him. So go to Proverbs 1, 28. Oh, did I just read that one? Yes, I did. Never mind. You're listening. Thank you. So when God corrects us, we must listen. So how can we learn to fear the Lord? Go to Proverbs 2, 3 through 5. It says, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. When is the last time you have actually searched for understanding and insight like you would if a gold bar was buried in your backyard? Ask yourself that. If you had gold in your yard, would you not be looking for it? I would. I have a relative that hides money in their yard. And when God takes them home, guess where I'm going to be? In that yard. <laughs> Digging it up, trying to find where is it? They didn't believe in the bank system, so everything's dug in their yard. They're one of those, but guess what? You'll see me in that yard one of these days. But if you had some treasure in your yard or in your house and you lost it, you'd be looking for it. If you lost $100 in your house, you'd be looking for it. Well, we have to even go after wisdom and knowledge more than that. According to the scriptures, search for them. As you would for silver, seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. For a moment, you have to think, what does that have to do with fearing God? Well, if you don't fear the Lord, you will not walk in insight and understanding. It won't be there. You won't walk in wisdom. You will act foolish. You will not live a life according to the scripture. So they do go together. We have to ask the Holy Spirit for discernment. The Bible says, if you have not, ask. So ask him for discernment. Don't you want discernment? We pray for discernment every time we interview students, don't we? Lord, speak to us. Not because they're bad, but it might not even be God's will for them in this season to come to our school. So we want discernment. And it, we need it every day, but this is the way we need to go after these things with all of our heart. Then we will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. Who wants knowledge of God? So do I. Well, this is what you do to get it. If you do not walk in fear of God, you'll limit your knowledge of him. You won't see him rightly. We all have met people, and I've been one of them years ago, that did not walk in the fear of God. Well, I saw God as a mean God. When I grew up, I dealt with all the things that a lot of people do, the church hurt, all of it, and I saw God wrong until I actually took the time to understand his word. Until I actually got correction and allowed myself to be led. Then I understood who he was. And then I understood he's not a mean God. He's a loving father and a good father protects their children. That's what a good father does. He doesn't hate me. He's not against me. The church isn't wicked. Yes, there's some people in it there that I understand aren't the best, 
but it's God's bride. I started seeing everything differently. It changed my mindset. It changed how I looked at life. It changed my outlook on Christianity, on the word of God, on all the things, on purity. Everything changed when I started to see God rightly. And then I began to walk in fear of the Lord. It was instant in many ways for me. I might have shared this story before, but when I was getting my life back together, my dad uh, took me on the road with him. He said, now it's time for you to start traveling with me, right when I left uh, university. And he said, you're gonna come with me, you're gonna be around the presence of the Lord, Jess. That's gonna break all the things in your life. And God just did radical things in my life. It was a beautiful season. I got so close to my dad. I mean, it was just wonderful. The things I got to witness went all over the world with him. And I remember I drove one of the nights to a nightclub in Orange County, California, and I thought, I don't wanna be religious. I'm not gonna be one of those Christians that never dances and never, you know, that I was just kinda like telling myself all the things we say to justify living a life set apart from the Lord. And I told my dad I was going to the movies, so that was the first strike, I lied. And I was in the parking lot and I was telling myself, I was hyping myself up the whole time driving there going, you're not really, that's, this isn't sin. You don't wanna be religious, Jess. You're not gonna do anything wrong. And I kid you not, I'm trying to get out of the car as soon as I get there and I literally start shaking. I can't even get out of the car. I start to feel the fear of the Lord in that moment. And I'm just a kid at this point. I mean, this was brand new to me, all of this. I mean, obviously, yes, I grew up in church, but you have to understand I wasn't walking with God for so many years. So this, this whole, this feeling of listening to that conviction of the Holy Spirit and actually listening and obeying, this was very new to me. It hadn't been this way since I was a child. So I'm, I'm trying to like get out, I'm like, I'm fine, and then I shake and I start trembling and I start crying. The first thing I did was call my dad. Daddy, I'm not at the movies. I'm at a nightclub, what? I'm at a... And I'm like, but wait, wait, wait. I feel like the God is telling me I'm not allowed to go in. And he goes, good for you, baby. Come home, I'll be waiting for you. It was so beautiful, but that's when it all shifted for me. It's like, oh, this is what it feels like to fear the Lord and listen to his conv convicting love. Convicting love, not control. It's love. It's beautiful. And man, I, I, I pray that I live my life that way for the rest of my life. I really want to. So go to Proverbs 3, 3 through 8. The funny thing was, me and the kids were listening to Proverbs in the car driving here, and my daughter Sophia knows scripture by heart, and I said, oh my gosh, I need to have this in my message today, and it was. <laughs> I already did it. It's like, that's the Lord. Vinny goes, remember, you need Proverbs 3. I was like, it was actually there. Thank you, Jesus. So God clearly wants me to share this today. Proverbs 3, 3 through 8. It says, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and listen, and people. And you will earn a good reputation. I want a good reputation. I want people to love and trust me. That's not bad. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed by your own wisdom. Remember, we talked about that just a moment ago. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Evil. Then, you, did you like how I said that? Evil. Okay, <laughs> evil. It's like French or something, I don't know. <laughs> then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. I mean, that passage alone, I, this is, I just love it so much. But actually, your body feels it when you walk in fear of God. You do, it gives you strength. It gives you endurance. It gives you longevity. It's amazing. It says, seek him, his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. That is probably a question we get so much at Jesus school. Which path do I take? Well, right here, seek his will in all you do. If you're seeking his will, don't worry. He won't lead you wrong. He's a good father. I wouldn't lead my kids wrong if they came to me for direction. I'd lead them the best way I knew how. 
Jesus does even better than that. And I love how it says, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Loyalty is being challenged as well. Loyalty is a beautiful thing. I don't want friends that aren't loyal. I want to be a loyal friend as well. Guess what? I want to be loyal to Jesus, which means I'll be faithful to the end. I think it was my dad that said something here once, like a year ago. He said, what was different about Mary? Why did the other disciples, besides, of course, John stayed with him, why did they leave? Of course, you know, there's many, many reasons, but he goes, there was loyalty in Mary's heart. Mary was loyal. John was loyal. I'd love to be like John and like Mary. I'm probably more like a Peter, but I'd love to be like them. They were loyal. They weren't afraid to lose their life for Jesus. Well, where did that come from? Of course, first love, of course. But there was loyalty in their heart. The word says, and it will earn you a good reputation with God and people. So being loyal and faithful, it matters. It matters. It's what I look for in friendships. It's what I try to be. And I'll take it a step further. It's what I try to be to Jesus. Loyalty means if I get persecuted for following him, I'm going to keep following him. Loyalty means if I'm mocked, if I'm criticized, if I'm attacked, I'm going to keep following Jesus. I'm not going to turn away. Even though it might come with a heavy price, I'm going to still go because I love him and I cannot be disloyal to him when he's been so loyal to me. It's holy. It's beautiful. So as we just read, to fear the Lord, we have to see outside of ourselves We often lose fear of God when we follow our own leading. It is impossible to fear the Lord and live under your own leading. We have self-appointed everything right now. Self-appointed apostles. I don't think people even know what an apostle really means. You got quiet. It's okay. You all know you have some of them on Facebook right now. (laughs) You have self-appointed prophets. You have self-appointed leaders. You have self-appointed teachers. Let God appoint you. God appoints. He does it. But what we do is we, we begin our own, I've seen it in the church, you begin these, your own theologies, these new ideas, which the Bible warns us about in the New Testament. And we justify sinning And we use the scriptures and start to deconstruct them to fit our own narrative of Jesus. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. We have to stand on the word of God. God's word changes us. We don't change it. We adapt to his word. It does not adapt to live to fit our lifestyle. So we have to watch these things as the Bible tells us. There is a battle in this generation of people not wanting to be led. I want to be led. I still have leaders. So does Michael. We have a lot of people that we have opened up our life to and we say, lead us. My dad will say this himself. When he walked through his very painful season with my mom, it was just a really hard time when they went through their divorce. He came to us and he said, I realized there's, I'm an open door. Oral Roberts just died and so did Rex Humbard. I need a pastor. He was old at that time, like in his 50s. And he goes, I need a pastor. So he went to Reinhard Bunk. Was that old? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like meaning he wasn't a youngin. Listen, I'm in my 40s. I'm not far behind that. But maybe to all you Jesus school students, that is old. It's okay. <laughs> but he was older. And he had lived a full life. He started ministry when he was in his 20s, and now he's in his 50s. So he had already been serving God for 30 years. And he was wise enough to know when Oral Roberts died and Rex Humbar died, his coverings were not there anymore. And his life became an open target. He went through the most dark season of his life in that season. And he was humble enough to go, I have no covering anymore. I need to go find a man of God to submit my life to. I need to be led. I am an open target to the devil that I have no leaders anymore to correct me. So he went to Jack Hayford on Reinhard Bunke and he said, I want to be led by you. Lead me, correct me. I want you to be my pastor. That's what he, he went to Jack Hayford's house and told him that, be my pastor. I need a covering. 
There's protection in that, my friends. And everything shifted in his life when he had a covering again. We all need a covering. It's beautiful. Like, even as a woman who ministers, I feel covered when my husband is here. It makes me feel, I, I'm glad that I'm doing it under the umbrella of Jesus' image. I want to be under this covering. It makes me feel safe. Not, not boxed in. <laughs> I feel free because I have a covering. Okay, go to Proverbs. We're, we're gonna wrap up in a few minutes, 14.2. I put yes with an exclamation mark, so I must have really liked it when I was typing this out. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just, yes! I just like typed to myself, well, I don't know. I must, I typed this out like a few months ago and I must have really liked this. Okay, let's see what it says. I don't even remember. Okay, Proverbs 14.2. It says, those who follow the right path fear the Lord. Those who take the wrong path despise him. Gosh, maybe that's why I liked it. Yeah. If you don't take the right path, you are despise him. It's what the scriptures teach. That means he has permission to tell you to stay or permission to tell you to go. Yes. We say that to our students all the time. They say, I wanna move on. Well, what did God say? What did God say? Did he tell you to, to go? Well, I don't know. Well, then I would wait until you hear what the Lord says. There's protection in that. Don't go your own way because you want the next thing. The grass is always greener on the other side. But there's protection in listening to his leading. Go to Ecclesiastes 5, 7. You there? Say, Foy Beth. <laughs> we love you for that. <laughs> All right, Ecclesiastes 5, 7. It says, talk is cheap, like daydreams and other useless activities. Then what does it say? Fear God instead. Fear God instead. I was talking to a leader out of Reading, and she said something, and at the time I thought... I don't really understand what she's meaning by this. But then when I started to read these, this scripture right here, I was like, ah, that's what she meant. She said, we're living in a fantasy world right now. There's a lot of people that are living with a fantasy mentality. They don't see things properly. They're chasing dreams that the Lord never told them to chase. And it's, it's true. And like the scripture says, talk is cheap like daydreams. It's one thing to talk about things, but you actually have to fear God and let his leading and his timing be your guide. He might have a plan for your life for something amazing. Well, let me say it differently. He does have a plan for your life for something amazing, but his timing is everything. Too soon, too long messes it all up. And that's not to put you in fear because we just read, if you're following his leading, there's protection in that. So you don't have to worry, will I miss it? You're not going to miss it. But you want to be led in the perfect timing and season by God. Like Philip, there was a moment, he had a moment, an entire region got saved through the gospel. Remember, he caught up to the chariot. There was a cosmos, what's it called? Kairos, huh, I was taking a class on cosmos and regent, never mind. A Kairos moment. He knew, I have a moment right now to go. If I don't, Ethiopia doesn't hear the gospel. There's protection in the leading of God. And guess what? If you go too soon, you miss it as well. I've shared this with our students. I have had opportunities to preach for like 15 years. I thought I was ready. I brought it to Michael, I brought it to my dad, I brought it to leaders, Joy Dawson, other people in my life, and I said, I'm getting invitations. They said, you're not ready. You're just not ready yet. At first, it deeply offended me. <laughs> it deeply offended me. I was very mad about the whole situation, but something in my gut knew they were right. I wasn't ready. 
I wasn't mature enough. And I, had a, I went through a rough season years later. Remember, I had the breakdown and everything. I wasn't ready to be ministering the gospel yet. I believe with all my heart, if I would have made myself ready when God wasn't saying it's time, I would have missed what God is doing now in my life. I promise you, I don't like just think that. I know that I know in my gut. There was protection in the waiting. God had something better in store for me. And there was protection in walking in submission in that moment. There was. And God gave me the, the greatest desires of my heart. With, with what God has done here through you at Jesus Image, with the school, with my family, I couldn't have even dreamed something this beautiful. It's beyond my, my greatest expectations. I'm so thankful for all of you. It's wonderful what the Lord's doing here. It's wonderful. I would have probably missed it if I would have gotten ahead of God. Thank God I didn't. Go to Ecclesiastes. We're almost done. Just give me five more minutes. 12, 13 through 14. I just want to give you the scripture so you understand why this message is so needed. I don't want you to go off of my experience. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14. It says, here now is my final conclusion. Fear God and obey his commands. For this is everyone's duty. Say everyone, everyone. God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. So God doesn't only look at the bad things we do, he looks at the good as well and the motive of their heart. And it all starts with fear God. I always say this, someone's final conclusion is typically when you go, I better listen up. That's when someone's really going, listen right now, this is my last thing to tell you. Fear God and obey his commands. It's that simple. We don't have to complicate following Jesus. It's hard but it's all right there. Fear me, obey my commands. Go to Matthew 3, 12. Joel, if you can help me out, buddy. This is what I really feel is happening right now in this hour. I could be wrong. I don't know, I feel it strongly though when I pray. Michael has said the same and we talked about it just a moment ago, but Matthew 3.12, it says, he is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never ending fire. I feel in my heart there's gonna be a wave of repentance that's gonna hit the body of Christ. I really, really do. When I was praying this morning and looking through my notes, I just started typing that. Like, I feel, Lord, that you're, there's gonna be a sovereign move of God in this hour where repentance is going to hit the church because repentance is being challenged right now by the world. And there is gonna be a wave of thanksgiving and devotion like we've never, ever seen before. If you're with me, just say amen, because we have to, as a church, go after this more. And I believe that the fear of God is gonna hit the church in a most holy way, and that purity and beauty is going to refine the bride of Christ. It's going to completely just, just melt away all the other things that don't matter. And the thing about the wheat and the chaff is like, I think Michael said this once, they're together. They were in the same bundle. This is why we see so many people we walk with and are people that you maybe do ministry school with or are people that I even went to Christian college with. I'm like, they're not serving God anymore. What happened? They were burning and now they're not burning anymore. But there is going to be a separation, my friends. There is and it's gonna be so evident and we wanna be on the right side of this. We do, we want to, we wanna be bold. It's not time to turn it down. That's intimidation, that's control. That's control when you feel like you have to silence the word of God because of the opinion of man. That's what control is. Not preaching the word, not preaching the clarity of the gospel, not loving people through the word of God. 
Control is making you feel like you have to silence what God is saying. And we have to be faithful. Just stand for a moment. I just want to pray as we close. We have to be faithful. Faithful, faithful friends. Oh, uh, you don't turn there, obviously, you're standing, but in Psalms it says, the Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. There is a beautiful friendship and an invitation open and available to you this morning. So many of you might feel isolated, and I'm not gonna do an altar call or anything, I mean, we already did that, but you might feel isolated, you might feel like, you are on your own and God is inviting you into holy friendship with him this morning through fear of God, through an open heart. So Lord, we just pray. We pray for your church. We pray, Father, for your work, God. We thank you, Lord, that it will go forth, Jesus, with clarity, God. Holy Spirit, I really feel this. I thank you for boldness for your children, Lord. Boldness in this hour, Lord. Clarity, God, the anointing of your word to fall on our hearts like never before, God. I thank you, God, even those that felt so quiet, so misunderstood, Lord, that they would walk in boldness, but it wouldn't be a boldness of, of anger or self-righteousness. It would be a boldness of your word, a boldness of walking in your light, Jesus. I thank you, God that there's gonna be an overwhelming hunger for your word like never before, Lord. Lord, that repentance will fall on every heart, on every marriage, on every household, God, that even our children, Lord, that have been wayward and running away, God, that repentance will hit them, God, that it will be so tangible, Lord, that every household, it won't just happen with the parents, that the household will be impacted, or even grandparents, parents that aren't serving the Lord, God, relatives, aunts and uncles, Lord, let it be a wave, God, a wave, Jesus. We thank you, God. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us walk in the fear of the Lord. Please convict us when we need it. Correct us when we need it, God. Break the pride in our hearts, Jesus. Break the stoniness in our hearts, God. Break that religious, been there, done there spirit, Lord. We wanna be like little children, God, in awe and wonder of your goodness, Lord. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, God. We repent, God, if we've not walked this out. We repent right now, Jesus. We repent, God, if we've, if we've done things, God, that have grieved you or that have made distance between us, God. We repent, Lord Jesus. We wanna be close, Jesus, to you, Lord. Close, Lord. The word says like the air you breathe, Jesus. You're in the midst, Lord. You're right here, God. You're right here. And we know that and we honor that this morning, Jesus. So give us an awareness of the cross, Jesus, an awareness of the blood of Jesus, Lord, an awareness of death to self, Lord. Let us live a real life of surrender, Lord, not just the language of surrender, Lord. Let us really, really understand what it means to live surrendered to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Can I have Judy up here just real quick? And then we're gonna bring the communion elements down and then we'll dismiss. This was, could you, do you know to God be the glory? And Joel, I know it'll come back to you when you start playing it. But I just would love to sing this song real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be the glory, Jesus. To God be the glory. as well with, with his, his blood, blood he has saved me with his power with his power he has raised me to God and be the glory for the thing Sing it again, just sing it one more time. 
Jesus. Lord, we pray over communion. If you guys want to bring the communion elements down, we thank you, God, for healing in our bodies today. We thank you, God, for the healing power of the blood of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your blood speaks a better word, Lord. Your blood. We thank you, God, for your body, Lord, that was given for us on the cross. 
Lord, we ask before we partake communion today that you forgive all of our sins, God, that you cleanse us, God, that you forgive us, God, for anything in our hearts. Lord, you know, you know us more than we know ourselves. Show us Holy Spirit so we can give it to Jesus this morning. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We love you, you guys. They will come and dismiss you to take communion. Uh, if you're new to the church or visiting, we don't want anyone to take communion alone, so find someone. If you see someone alone, please go take communion with them. If you're watching online, we'd love to invite you and your family to take communion as well, and we will see you tonight. Love you guys. To God be the glory to with
We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here as we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works He has done. May the generations come to find Him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for His people.